500mm reflectors available for short period loans so members can try it before they buy. Now I've just activated my YouTube stream again. It is going at the moment. So for those wanting to look for my, my YouTube stream, uh, VK3CSJ on YouTube, just try again. Look for the live symbol and uh, hopefully it'll hang in there but it is back up and running again as I can see I can see also, also see Discord okay just looking at there on Discord so we are back online again from what I can see members are also encouraged to make use of the society's country property located near Heathcote some 90 minute drive north of Melbourne there are a range of instruments available for members uh, to use, the larger two requiring appropriate training. And they range from 300mm to 1000mm in aperture. Also located on the side is a fully steerable 8.5m steer, um, radio telescope, which members can access with involvement in the radio astronomy section. Members are encouraged to make and use telescopes. Advice and help on both matters are provided willingly to new newcomers desiring to do the same. Instrument making is only one of the number of common interest activities catered for within the society. Other areas of interest that members can participate in include deep sky observing, astrophotography, lunar and planetary observing, auroral, meteor, comet, radio astronomy, computing, cosmology and astrophysics, historical studies and research in astronomy in general. Contact details for various section directors are provided in the yearbook and further information may be obtained by visiting the ASV website at www.asv.org.au that's www.asv.org.au Richard's got problems with his OBS it's not one thing it's another isn't it um, we also ASV also publish via email uh, something called Crux Extra uh, Crux Extra Bulletins which are sent out every other week to inform members or keep keep informed uh, the members of the Society of uh, Events coming up and any news that might be uh, relevant for members to know. Otherwise the Crux magazine is the uh, is the thing that gets published uh, quite, I think it's eight, eight times a year. In fact this is uh, this is the latest Crux so I'm just holding up on the camera right now. <coughs> what mine uh, no, it looks like it's okay at the moment. It's still red. It's uh, and I've still got Discord running, so it looks like it's still okay here from what I can see. Maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, so that's the latest crux with with a nice picture of the uh, total eclipse there too. Um, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, there's a nice glossy. Um, publication, nice full colour images, high quality res images and uh, yeah, Crux is published six times a year. Uh, it's published six times a year by the Astronomical Society um, and uh, yeah, there's a bit of a, yep, yeah. so there it is, that's the uh, latest Crux, that's the sort of thing that you get. Um, Alright, yeah, I think we're still on YouTube from what I can see. That hasn't fallen, hasn't fallen over. Um, all right, now uh, this is ASV Radio VK3 EKH, twenty eighth of April. Um, ASV is going through a, a, a new website change too. Um, so uh, when you visit uh, the ASV's homepage, you'll uh, notice that there's a slight. Uh, difference to the arrangement and appearance and uh, it's still going under uh, significant uh, improvements uh, every now and then so we'll put up just be patient with anything that might not be um, quite right uh, but uh, also uh, we have 20 sections 21 sections now that make up uh, the ASV um, in alphabetical order it's astrophotography uh, club section comet section comet and meteor section computing section Cosmology and Astrophysics, Deep Sky, Historical Section, Instrument Making Juniors, Lunar and Planetary, New Astronomers Group, Radio Astronomy, Solar Astronomy, Space Exploration, and Women in Space. And uh, Women in Space is the uh, the newest uh, addition to the list of sections that uh, 
um, that are now running uh, for uh, the members. Oh, and I can't seem to open up that page. Hopefully it's not because I've dropped out again. But anyway, don't worry about that. Um, all right. So, uh, but like I say, more information about the society can be gleaned from the website www.asv.org.au Okay, you're tuned to ASV Radio, 10.13 is the time. <laughs> All right. Now, some of you might have noticed or heard that um, uh, the Japanese uh, tried to uh, land on the moon uh, with another rover or probe. But unfortunately, it uh, seems to have crashed. Japanese lunar lander loses contact moments before touchdown. It just goes to show that even on the moon, you know, the nearest uh, celestial object to us, um, it's still a, a touch and go situation about having successful landings and successful um, campaigns to, to getting to another planet or moon in this case. And when it does work, uh, it is really a, a sense of triumph for everybody concerned, um, uh, well and truly behind everybody that's, um, that's involved with these uh, attempts to, to land on a, another, ob, um, another celestial object in this uh, solar system. And uh, when it's successful, it really is uh, a little bit of a, a tear occurs in the eye. <laughs> the Tokyo-based company that developed the lander iSpace still hopes to eventually provide commercial services to both private companies and space agencies alike, it seems. Now, it did take one picture, this probe did take one picture uh, during the total eclipse, in fact. And uh, I'll bring that up now. Um, and uh, this image that you're seeing on the screen is quite genuine. It looks a bit fake, but it's not. Uh, while in a circular orbit some 100 kilometers above the lunar surface, iSpace's lander mounted camera captured this shot of Earth rising over the limb of the moon. And uh, the image also captures a unique view of a solar eclipse. If you look closely, uh, you'll see the shadow of the moon projected on the Earth's surface. So you can actually see it. it's a little black dot. Um, just uh, just uh, at the the lower part of the uh, the image there but it's quite a quite a, a nice image of earth uh, on the on the limb of um, of the uh, horizon there of the moon so things were working at the time uh, for all, for all intents and purposes uh, the probe was still quite successful uh, successfully working the Japanese startup iSpace attempted to become the first private company to successfully soft land a commercial Jap spacecraft on the moon today, that is Tuesday, April 25. However, it now appears that the landing attempt, uh, like several other such attempts in recent years, has failed. And uh, the company's car-sized lander, called M1, first set forth for the moon late last year. Uh, launching aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from Cape Canaveral in Florida on December 11. After a multi-month trip to lunar orbit, the spacecraft today fired its main thrusters to carry out a pre-programmed series of commands aimed to at gently lowering the lander on the lunar surface. But when the craft got within just a few dozen metres of the moon's surface, iSpace lost contact with the lander. Attempts to re-establish contact have, have so far failed at the time, suggesting iSpace M1 lander did not touch down softly and safely as intended, but instead likely crashed into the moon's surface. We have to assume that we did not complete the landing on the lunar surface, said iSpace founder Tashi Kamada. Kakamada dur during the company's webcast. We will keep going, never quit in our quest, he said. iSpace currently plans to attempt at least two more lunar landings over the next few years, at applying lessons learned during today's landing attempt to increase their odds of success. Um, so, yes, there it is. Um, Bit, uh, bit sad that that one didn't uh, didn't work out for them. The YouTube stream is still running, from what I can see. 
This is ASV Radio, VK3 EKH, broadcasting on 3541 kHz and via the Melbourne TV repeater, VK3 RTV1, Digital Channel 1. Uh, Stephen sent us an email, reports, uh, hi Clint, great signal as usual, 30 over 9, no worries, thanks Steve, good on you. That's uh, VK3 EKH at gmail.com, VK3 EKH at gmail.com. If anybody wishes to send reports. Okay, next in the list of articles here tonight is Einstein's rings. Uh, Einstein's rings around distant galaxies inch us closer to solving dark matter debate. For decades, physicists have argued over the nature of the elusive dark matter that pervades the universe.